almost made it, bro. We should be able to go in here, cruise up here, and uh, come this way. I think we can even get through this small one. I think we'll find a place to anchor yep. for the night, like right in the middle of maybe the small river. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll just sit and just watch the jungle around us. I think that'll be cool. Go for a little paddleboard. I thought you were going to say swim. I was like, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know about that. Cayman's right here, bro. Previously on Delos. Swells are picking up and we're surfing down these waves. Holy shit, 14.8, 14.9 knots. Jumping ah, rain! Right. Uh, we're rolling. Yeah. Okay, we're in. What are we at? Take you to the second ring. And we start exploring the jungle rivers of French Guiana. We just entered the small tributary off of San Moroni River. Water is brown, but it's flat. Weather is calm, nice and cool, and there's animal sounds everywhere. The jungle. Taking a sailboat someplace out of the ordinary is a passion of ours. Jungle rivers in particular are just magical, and transporting your house with all its comforts into different surroundings is one of the coolest things about living on board. We often don't have a plan or destination and just explore for the pure joy of it. Just give us a bit of water under the keel and we're good. So crazy the depth in this river. We're at 8.1 meters right now, and then we only have like I don't know, 20 meters on each side of us before the jungle starts. A lot of water cutting through here to, to deepen it up. So cool to just cruise up the river like this. Like we haven't seen any people in a long time and just really, really quiet. Hello. By this point, we're way off the charts and deep into the jungle. This is prime howler monkey habitat, and we are hoping to get close enough to film. But so far, the only thing we spotted was tree movements. The animals seem ultra skittish and fled deeper into the jungle before we could get any closer. It was much different than our experience in Borneo, up the Kinabatangan River, where the animals were much more relaxed and let us get pretty close. Hey bro, you don't have to answer back, but just off my beam, there's some monkeys in the tree. If you turn around to starboard, I don't know if you'll be able to get them. I see the trees moving, but that's about it. Yeah, I think once you started coming close, I saw a bunch of jump away, go deeper into the jungle. The, the shallowest part so how about we go up another 100 meters or so and then we anchor this could be a cool place to spend the night over yeah that sounds good to me now that we're in eight meters i'll come back and we can anchor like short lengths ahead 
Sounds like a plan, standing by. So this afternoon, we have decided to go for a explore up one of the tributaries. Dinghy mission. Uh, Dinghy mission. Hmm? I'm quite afraid of mosquitoes. So I'm going to yeah. put on my adventure pants. We're in malaria territory. This is true. Explore up the river. I love those. We'll hopefully see something. Droni. Droni. Driver Paddy. Paddy. Good. <laughs> cheers, brother. Good, cheers. <laughs> okay, like which way do you guys want to go or what? in the middle of the river. So I think we pretty much came to the end of the river. Well, not really the end, but as long as far as we can take a Maggie. <laughs> and we haven't seen anything yet, <laughs> except a, a lot of cool trees. Top of the tree roots. Mangroves. Mangroves. Seen a lot of mangroves. It's still really cool to go up the river like this and just see the jungle. Someone just chopped the shit out of everything. That's weird. We burned it too. We burned, huh? Just destroying. Maybe they need to let them dry or something. Like, look at that tree. That's a pretty big tree, huh? What do you see? It's like all the trees have been chopped down and burned. And there's some really big trees that have been chopped with the chainsaw. Just a mild de deforestation. Just a mild deforestation. Weird, out here in the middle of nowhere. How did it get here? Really random. I don't know, maybe there's trails? Yeah, maybe. maybe the jungle, because it's not like... If they were coming by boat, you think they would have cleared like a better landing spot or something. Yeah. Hmm. Strange. We proceed up the river. It's estimated that each second, 85 acres of rainforest is destroyed. That's about 160 times what we witness here, each and every second. When we return to the town of Moroni, we asked locals if logging was legal here. The forests here are supposed to be protected, but given the limited resources, policing was nearly impossible. 
The main culprit is demand for valuable hardwoods such as teak and mahogany, which can take up to 25 years to grow. The wood is used mainly for furniture and household wood products. It's actually a $100 billion a year global industry. Demand is driven by the consumer, and you can make a difference. Before you consider a wood product, please visit https rainforestfoundation.org forward slash illegal dash logging and educate yourself on sustainable wood products. The next morning, we sailed back to the town of Moroni to see some sights and try to get some information on why the monkeys were so skittish. You don't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> no, now we speak everything but French a little bit. But you understand, no? No. But we laugh and we smile and it's okay. <laughs> Our plan was to board this local pirogue then head a few more miles up the river through waters that were too shallow for Delos. The goal was to explore a small village on the Suriname side of the river and get a glimpse into that life. Around here, the river is the major highway and local pirogues are the delivery trucks. There's no real checkpoints on the river it's sort of a customs gray area along both shores where goods and people can move freely between the two countries. By this point, we were way up the river and had landed at a small village on the Suriname side. Right away, we could feel a different vibe. It was a much more traditional village than the French-influenced town of Moroni. Seems like uh, it's no problem to cross the border here. People do it pretty regularly, just in the pirogues. Okay. Okay. This is not her first time. No. serve it without it going bad for one year. Yeah. No refrigeration, nothing, and it's purely manioc, nothing else, no water, no nothing. And they heat it up to these rings, and then you can conserve it for one year. We need that. I know. Hard. <laughs> I like it. But I also like very hard things. Oh, good. It's like hard bread. Better. Mm. It's like Swedish hard bread. Mm. With some banana and chocolate on top. At the tourist office, we also discovered it was carnival season in French Guiana. Is the carnival good here? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> she just... The carnival routes in French Guiana are similar to those in other South American and Caribbean countries. The European colonists celebrated carnival, but forbid slaves from the festivities. The slaves had their own private celebrations and used it as a way to keep their culture. When slavery was abolished in 1884, everyone was finally allowed to celebrate in public. The specific details vary from country to country, but they all have one thing in common. 
Good music, lots of dancing, and one hell of a party. made some friends <laughs> from Argentina. <laughs> this amigos. is uh, Julie. Julie. Julie and yeah. Manu. Manu. And we met them, they were playing in the bar the other night. We're gonna record some of their music right now with our very top-notch <laughs> recording studio. <laughs> Senior Brady. Very fancy. <laughs> Se vive igual, si no se mira la otra vereda, se vive igual, si no pintamos otra bandera, se vive igual. No me dirán que somos los inocentes que busca más entre vos y yo. ¿Entendieron? ¿Cómo? Me olvidé la letra. Oh, oh you forgot. Yeah. Ah, okay. ¿Cómo que eso? Tan sabroso. Tan sabroso. Qué bueno. It's her song. <laughs> Salí de viaje hace cinco años para, en un comienzo, recorrer Latinoamérica, que es lo que sigo haciendo hasta ahora. Ahora ya comenzando con algunos países que no hablan español ni portugués, pero... Y ahora la idea es dar la vuelta al mundo, visitar todos los continentes. En generar eh, una amplitud de, de conocimiento acerca de la vida del otro, eh, de las diferentes formas de vida que existen en el mundo, que son muchas, muchas, y creo que eso nos aporta, eh, nos da mucha libertad, porque a la hora de elegir algo, elijo en un abanico de opciones muy grande, eh, que es difícil a veces, cuando uno está mirando la tele, la televisión, mucha violencia, mucho odio, mucha y viajando seguimos creyendo en que sí se puede, en que se pueden hacer cosas buenas, en que la gente es buena. Muchas personas dicen, no tienen miedo, ¿por qué viajan así? No tienen miedo, no tienen miedo. No, hay mucha gente buena en el mundo. We are off on an adventure. Go and see this church here. So the inside of this church was was painted by a by a prisoner. Oh. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah, I didn't even do that. Well, he did it for six years. It's actually pretty quickly. It's a lot of really intense, detailed, yeah. beautiful paintings, like every inch. I like lighting candles in different churches and thinking about the people I love. So I will do it here as well. It's a random little church. Do this. 
Our mission for the day wasn't church hopping, though. Back in Moroni, we met Samuel, who runs a little yacht club we were moored at. He also serves as the customs officer for the port, and at the moment, our chauffeur. We explained to Samuel that we wanted to get a closer look at the howler monkeys. He wasn't surprised they kept their distance in the jungle. It turns out that the wild monkeys are actually a food source here in French Guiana and are actively hunted. Samuel had some personal experience with this and had nursed a newborn monkey back to health after his mom was killed. He eventually took the monkey to the very same sanctuary that we were on our way to now. Uh, have we arrived? Yes, yes. Let's take care of the one who... Oh, look at there's a monkey right there. Uh, oui, ça va? He's coming for us? He don't like girls, really. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he doesn't like girls. Okay. But he likes, he likes to cars. Cars. <laughs> 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 Oh. Okay. Will he eat my apple? Probably. Probably. He's checking it out. <laughs> cool. What's up, dude? <laughs> so these are the ones that we Hello, heard Charlie. in Brazil. They're, they're up in the trees. Yeah. But we never, they're very high up in the harbors. He likes you. He wants to film with the GoPro. Yeah, look at him. Oh, he's out. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. Charlie. What is it? Does it mean... Uh, He's happy. No, it's uh, territorial. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Howler monkeys are native to Central and South America, and when a troop of them get together and start howling, it can be heard up to three miles away. This sanctuary was created by a husband and wife team with one purpose to rehabilitate animals and return them to the wild. It's located in the middle of the jungle and has lots of space to roam. Some of the animals come from exotic pet owners that change their mind. Some are disabled or injured, and some are displaced by habitat destruction. And then we can watch if he's coming through. Like <laughs> oh, look at these guys coming out of the cages. Atu! Atu! Atu, uh, one of these monkeys belonged to Samuel. It was uh, from the Moroni River where we were the other day, and the mom was killed. So the guide came and tried to find somebody to take over raising the monkey because it was really tiny when Samuel first got Atu. And eventually they had to find a place suitable for the monkey, so they found this like rehabilitation center. And they brought him here, and that was six months ago, I think. So now Atu has a girlfriend, and I think the idea is to build a group of the monkeys and then let them go into the wild. <laughs> Going up the tree. And how do you get them to come back and go back inside the cage? Do they? Yeah. With food the, or no? Just uh, like, like, like this. <laughs> they, they don't mind being in there. Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> crazy. Watch out for Charlie behind you. <laughs> Why doesn't he like girls? I don't know. I don't know. He likes to nibble on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Chewing on my fingers. So if, if he did that with a girl, he would end up biting us, you think? Or you don't know? You don't want to risk. Yeah. Has he bitten girls in yeah. the past? Yeah. But never boys? <laughs> no, never. No, just girls. Just girls. Huh. You want to go sailing, Charlie? He's a guy who had recovered his son. No biting. No biting. It's really cool to just walk around and hear the history of this place. They, they deal with everything from like different animals to uh, paying for everything and stuff. It's a really cool place, huh? Yeah, it's really good to see stuff like this. Yeah. Helping the animals and it's kind of nice in the natural environment. 
it's not huge and it's not a concrete like destructive thing it's just yeah. sort of wood framings and plenty of space and he's not just keeping them like for him or to make money off them he's working really hard to get them released back into the wild so it's really yeah. special to see it, well, true. Yeah, how big of a difference just one person or two people can make you know yeah it's cool so we just heard that the laws in French Guiana protecting the animals are not so good and you're allowed to kill three howler monkeys per day per person. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Three per day per person for yeah. food. That's a lot. That's crazy. That's so are they are they becoming endangered or is there enough population now, to sustain? But, uh, but sometimes a little teddy bear. How do people hunt them or catch yeah. them? Like a rifle. Like a gun yeah, or cool. a oh. Just shoot it out of a tree and then <laughs> that was awesome. That was cool. Yeah. Super cool. All right, on we go. On we go. And I have some internet access and got the Wikipedia article on the Ariane 5 rocket, which is going to be launched today. And it is a heavy lift launch vehicle used by the European Space Agency to put stuff into either geostationary or low Earth orbit. Rocket launch? What are you talking about, Captain Brion? It's a rocket launch uh, next week. Next week? Cool. Yes. If I have your passport uh, information, to get invitation. In 1964, the French government built a spaceport to launch satellites. In 1975, the European Space Agency was formed, and now Kourou is the main spaceport for European launches. The proximity to the equator is ideal for geostationary orbits, and a slingshot effect from the Earth's rotation gives the rocket a speed boost which saves on fuel. Today's mission will launch two communication satellites into geostationary orbit. The SES-14 will provide cable TV and VSAT services for the Americas and North Atlantic Ocean. It also hosts a research payload for NASA to monitor the sun's impact on the Earth's atmosphere. The Alya-3 satellite will provide broadband internet to Brazil and parts of Africa. It's fitted with 15 kilowatts of solar power to carry out its mission. Both satellites weigh about four tons each and are powered by electric plasma propulsion systems for orbital maneuvering. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. Allumage au tabulcan. Allumage EAP, top décollage. The Ariane 5 rocket weighs about 780 tons, which is mostly fuel. The main stage alone is 100 feet tall and will burn 175 tons of liquid hydrogen or oxygen. The solid rocket boosters contain 500 tons of solid propellant and will burn this in just over two minutes. That's a burn rate of four tons of fuel per second. All of this is required to get a 10-ton payload up to 25,000 miles per hour, or 7 miles a second, to reach escape velocity. No wonder why each launch costs an estimated 150 million euros. The single first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume their 240 tons in just over two minutes, in about 15 seconds, they will be extinguished and you'll hear that from the DDO. In just about two seconds, you'll see 
at the booster separation. Separation étage accélération à poudre. Confirmed by the DDO. They will fall 500 kilometers from the shore in a protected area, and I shot of it there on the onboard camera. There's another booster on the uh, port side, of course. That was my first rocket launch. I didn't expect it to be so intense. That might sound silly, but perfect end to the day. And it was definitely different than I thought. I thought it was going to be kind of, I don't know, less bright and less noisy, yeah. uh, like way further away. But it was quite. It really um, lit up like everything. It lit up yeah. the clouds, and you could even see the detachment between the first and second stage when the solid boosters dropped off and when the secondary engine lit. And, yeah. and right now that thing is in space, it's about to drop satellites. The whole process takes 35 minutes. That's insane. If, so in, a, in I don't know, 20 more minutes it's going to be two satellites. Two, satellites two more satellites space. are up there now. Next on Delos, we set sail for the Caribbean. Go, Luke, go! and start exploring the island of Tobago. Okay, go. I'm <laughs> 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 in the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> Like it? I like 